This is your News Source Evening Bulletin for today, Tuesday, the 5th day of November in the year 2019. Here is what we're tracking tonight. The Ghana Elections Commission is going ahead with the publishing of the names of over 25,000 persons who have not collected their national ID cards since 2008. The names will be published in local newspapers this weekend, and those persons will have 10 days to show up and collect those ID cards or run the risk of being removed from the voters' list. The decision was reinforced today during the statutory meeting of the Guinea Elections Commission. Opposition nominated Commissioner Says Kunrad said he still has concerns about the publishing of the names and the removal of the persons who did not collect their ID cards. Much to the disagreement of myself and, um, and colleagues, the chairman is insisting on publishing the names of the persons who have not collected the ident their identification cards. And what is now made very clear is that persons who might have registered as late as last year um, or in the last claims and objections period before the, this current one and did not collect their ID card also stands at risk of being removed from the list uh, for non-collection of that identification card, which uh, for me continues to be disconcerting. Government nominated commissioner Vincent Alexander said the chairman has reinforced her decision on the issue and the names will be published this weekend. A major decision which was made or reaffirmed was that we will be publishing the over 20,000 names of the persons who have not uplifted their ID cards. Those will be published and each individual will be written to. On the question, it should be this weekend. This weekend. The opposition has raised concern about the move, declaring it as illegal and claiming that it could disenfranchise persons. However, the coalition parties have said they support the move since it will read the list of phantom voters. More news coming up in just a moment. Tired of long lines? Register with MyGTT at mygtt.co.gy. That's mygtt.co.gy to view and pay your bills from anywhere. Enter to win an Amazon gift card worth 25 US dollars or a bounty voucher worth 5,000 Guyana dollars when you sign up today. GTT, do more. Enter the GBTI Quick Cash Christmas promotion and make it a Christmas to remember. You get up to $500,000 easy for anything you want this Christmas. Plus, enter for a chance to win fabulous items for your home. One complete 7-foot granite top base kitchen cabinet, one sectional suite, one five-piece dinette set, and complimentary baskets of goodies. Apply at your nearest branch or online at www.gbtibank.com. GBTI, we see Christmas through your eyes. Be conducting a claims and objections exercise from the 1st of October 2019. During this exercise, objections to the inclusion of the name of anyone who is suspected not to have met the eligibility requirements for inclusion in the PLE could be made only by an elector who is listed in the same divisional list in which the person being objected to is listed, or accredited scrutineers of political parties, providing any such scrutineer has monitoring responsibilities for the division in which the person being objected to is listed. Objections can be tendered to the registration officer of the registration area from the 1st of October 2019 to the 11th of November 2019. You must present the relevant original documents in order for the transaction to be completed. Don't delay. Visit the nearest GCOM registration office today. For more information, visit our website at www.gcom.org.gy. Follow GCOM on Facebook at Guyana Elections Commission. Contact us on 225-0277-9 or 223-9653. Email pro at gcom.org.gy or the nearest GCOM registration office. Super 95 gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Guyol's Super 95 gasoline. 
The party, which has a light bulb as its symbol, will be focusing on the electricity sector as part of its campaign strategy. The Change Ghana party hosted its first weekly press conference today and unpacked a number of proposals and plans that it has for the electricity sector and the Ghana Power and Light Company. Presidential candidate for Change Guyana, businessman Robert Badal, believes that one of the first things that need to be done is the privatization of power generation for the national power company. Phase privatization of generating as assets, generation of electricity to the private sector, to be private sector managed and owned, and electricity supplied to GPL under a power purchase agreements. Mr. Badal said he is convinced it is a model that could work in Guyana since it works in many other CARICOM countries and that has erased power supply problems. There have been attempts in the past to privatize GPL's operations but those attempts all failed. Badal said his proposal would only deal with the generation of power. It's putting the generating power in the hands of local business. And a, a, a good case in point to show how it is effective right here in Guyana is in Kukwani and Linden, where the Kukwani Utilities uh, Power Corporation, they buy their, buy their power from Linden Electricity Corporation, which gets it from both sides. And similarly, Russell sells their power so, uh, well, it would be Kokwani in, in their area for distribution, and their power supply is reliable. The Change Guyana presidential candidate is the former chairman of the Guyana Power and Light Company. He said during his two years at the company, 2016 to 2018, the company saw improvements with more income and a decline in losses. He trumpeted those figures as part of his management experience that he believes is needed to lead Guyana. My accomplishments during that period includes in two years I've added seven billion dollars to GPL's cash flows even as oil prices increased by more than 40 percent during that period never in the history of GPL within three months of my appointment I announced a 20 percent reduction in electricity rates I approve three new 1.7 megawatt units for Anna Regina. But I'll say it is clear that the current government and the previous one both failed to successfully deal with the power problems in the country and GPL. He said as Ghana moves towards the oil industry and more investors are expected, stable electricity is something that must be given priority. Just recently, the current chairman of GPL, Ron Lucas, revealed that the company has experienced power outages at a rate of eight per day. Change Guyana Prime Ministerial candidate Nigel Hines said that figure is unacceptable. He believes GPL must be put in a stronger position to make it viable and reliable. Question about whether the plans of Change Guyana will result in cheaper electricity rates, Badal said he would have to do the math. A Guyanese man who was busted at New York's JFK International Airport with drugs has admitted that he trafficked the cocaine to settle an old debt. 51-year-old Raymond Irwin Harry was arrested on the 27th of October just after he arrived in a Caribbean Airlines flight from Guyana. Two pieces of luggage that a man was carrying were both checked and searches revealed cocaine in their false sites. In total, the US agents found just over two pounds of cocaine in the false sides of the bags. Initially, Harry claimed that he was not given anything by anyone to take to the US. However, after telling the agents that he packed the bags himself and seeing the cocaine found in the false sites, the accused told the customs agents that he had received the luggage from someone in Guyana who he owed the money. He admitted that the person told him that in exchange for him taking the bags to the US and delivering them to a contact in New York, his debt would be forgiven. According to the U.S. agents, Harry also admitted that he was aware that the bags contained cocaine. He also told them that he had been given a telephone number and the name of the contact who was expected to pick him up at the airport and collect the drug-laden bags. The complaint did not reveal the details of that contact. The accused has since been charged with the trafficking of cocaine into the U.S. and has been remanded to jail in Brooklyn. Well, the Hydromet service has announced that increased rainfall is coming Guyana's way as the country transitions into the second wet and rainy season of the year before the expected time. 
In a statement, the Hydro Met Office explained that the secondary rainfall season usually begins in the second half of November and continues until the end of January to mid-February the following year. The department said that given the arrival of the rainfall season, water accumulation in areas with compromised drainage is expected and that can lead to localized flooding and flood-related hazards, an upsurge in mosquito breeding, moisture-related pests, and waterborne diseases. The Hydromet service is urging that careful attention be given to short-range forecasts provided by the Hydromet Services National Weather Watch Center in order to plan daily activities, especially by persons involved in the agricultural sector and those living in flood-prone areas. In addition to the expected rainfall, there are several periods of above normal high tides forecasted in the coming months, which when coupled with the forecasted weather conditions can have severe localized impacts on the livelihood of the citizens, the Hydromet office noted. Let's tell you now that the Ghana Pegasus Hotel made several requests for concessions from the government for its new investment in the hotel industry, but was only granted 50% of what it requested. The revelation was made today by owner of the Pegasus Hotel, Robert Badal, in response to questions raised by news source. Yes, we got some concessions, but not all that we were entitled to. Well, we got it only for the accommodation, and they didn't approve the one for the offices. But, I mean, I contested that because it's, uh, this is a tourism company, right? And offices are all so related to tourism. People want to move their offices from other countries. They will, they will, they will boost up the accommodation. They will require. Guyana has never seen a complex like this, where you have hotel facilities, restaurants, bars, hotels. Um, side of that are luxury suites for executives, right? Big suites that you have never seen in this country before all but for its world standard. Mr. Badal pointed to the concessions that were granted to the Marriott Hotel and the Princess Hotel under the last government. We've seen the Marriott, the Marriott, what the concession they give. No taxes for 10 years, no withholding tax, no property tax, no, all the taxes. And when a local invests, we're, we're, we're confronting these hurdles, right? Princess got the same thing that Marriott got. What happened to this? And we're paying taxes all the while. Marriott never paid taxes in this country. And they got all those concessions. There's something fundamental wrong with the minds of the leadership in this country. Despite being disappointed, Mr. Badal made it clear that the non-granting of all the requested concessions did not trigger his entry into the political arena. Badal was a supporter of the APNU AFC coalition at the last elections, but recently formed his own party and launched a campaign for the next elections. My motivation into politics, as I've said before, is the plight of the Guyanese people. A poor capita income of quarter little Antigua and St. Kitts, daily blackouts, crime, unemployment, destitute communities all across this country, right? Those are the motivation. The Pegasus owner, Robert Badal, revealed today that if he is elected to serve in the parliament, he has no plans to relinquish any business ties. The National Road Safety Council is joining forces with the Ghana Police Force and a number of other organizations to raise more awareness of the importance of road safety. A new campaign titled Life is Not a Car Park was launched today. The campaign is calling on road users to be more alert, slow it down on the roadway and be more courteous to other road users. The campaign will be taken to the South Dakota track for the November race meet to encourage all drivers to understand their role in road safety. Special Superintendent of the Ghana Police Force and member of the National Road Safety Council, Owen Trotz, emphasized that there is a need for road users, especially drivers, to change their attitude on the roadways. I observed that it's not a retraining, it's the attitude. They drive in a car and they drive correctly. And they drive a minibus and they use the brother say to my left like a weapon. I believe it's the attitude in driving. Retraining is a must, yes. But the attitude, they must have a positive attitude and know the five things. Chronicle Solutions is one of the other organizations involved in the road safety effort. The CEO of that company, Latoya Jack, said even as there are efforts to change the attitude of drivers, it is a tough task. 
founder of Mothers in Black Group, Denise Dias, noted that everyone must come to the realization that there is a rule for everyone to stop the lawlessness on the country's roadways. My colleagues across the way here, they can teach people to drive properly. And I think that's going to be major throughout, all the, throughout Guyana because they'll be going around to all various co um, companies. And those are driving trucks, minibuses, cars, even motorcycles, I'm sure. They will be um, instructing. And I think there will be great development there. And safety driving instructor Adrian Clark said drivers need to be refreshed in training and understand that they always have a choice. All of the groups involved in the road safety efforts are set to work hand in hand as they seek to promote road safety. Across the region is coming up next. strong but never too proud to stoop and help someone we must send a clear signal to all do right walk in upright ways knowing that's what being a man is all about and ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing stand strong be the one to live right Guyana, the moment you've been waiting for is here. It's the Ministry of Education's Guyana Teachers Union 59th National School Cycling, Swimming and a Track and Field Championships on November 17th through 22. Come see top student athletes and teachers from 15 sporting districts compete in intense rivalry. Cycling at the National Park, Georgetown. Swimming at the National Aquatic Center, Liliandal, November 18. And on November 19 through 22, the Track and Field at the National Track and Field Center, Liliandal. Nora. Action starts 9.30. The National Championships where stars are born. Powered by Malta Supreme, Hits and Jams Entertainment and NCN. And named Stan, whose business needed a new plan. Christmas was coming, this much was true. He needed some help but didn't know what to do. Then fast as a flash, three helpers did come from Republic Bank. They came with some. One had low interest rates, one reduced equity, one with approval so quick and easy. Now Stan is the man and his business is booming. Christmas is good and he is winning. Reach more customers and boost your business with a Republic Small Business Loan today. The Guyana Elections Commission would be conducting a claims and objections exercise from the 1st of October 2019. During this exercise, objections to the inclusion of the name of anyone who is suspected not to have met the eligibility requirements for inclusion in the PLE could be made only by an elector who is listed in the same divisional list in which the person being objected to is listed, or accredited scrutineers of political parties, providing any such scrutineer has monitoring responsibilities for the division in which the person being objected to is listed. Objections can be tendered to the registration officer of the registration area from the 1st of October 2019 to the 11th of November 2019. You must present the relevant original documents in order for the transaction to be completed. Don't delay. Visit the nearest GCOM registration office today. For more information, visit our website at www.gcom.org.gy. Follow GCOM on Facebook at Guyana Elections Commission. Contact us on 225-0277-9 or 223-9653. Email pro at gcom.org.gy or the nearest GCOM registration office. Across the region right now, in a statement today, the chairman of the Caribbean community, CARICOM, St. Lucia's Prime Minister, said the Caribbean community is saddened and concerned by the deepening of the crisis in Haiti, which has paralyzed the normal functioning of all sectors of the country and created a situation of extreme hardship for the people. 
CARICOM said it deplores the destruction of property and livelihoods, the deteriorating humanitarian situation, and the increasing death toll resulting from the breakdown of law and order, which has intensified over the past seven weeks. The organization said while CARICOM supports fully the enjoyment of the right to freedom of assembly, it urges that that be done in a lawful manner. The protracted political crisis which has upset the political and economic stability of the country and prolonged the disruption of the daily activities of Haitians can only be resolved peacefully through constructive dialogue. This evening, CARICOM is appealing to all parties involved to commence a meaningful discourse in good faith to restore order and normalcy to Haiti. Thousands of Chileans took to the streets again on Monday to demand better social services, some clashing with police as protesters demanded an end to economic inequality even as the government announced that weeks of demonstrations are hurting the country's economic growth. The latest protests came after a short break in the weeks-long wave of demonstrations in which 20 people were killed in clashes amid looting and arson that forced the cancellation of two upcoming major international summits. Most Chileans starting last week were on a long holiday weekend, and Monday's protest was relatively small compared to earlier demonstrations. But the thousands who turned out showed that the protest movement did not appear to be fizzling. Most demonstrators supporting the leaderless national movement marched peacefully, but some groups threw rocks and firebombs at riot police officers, who responded with volleys of tear gas and water cannon blasts in an effort to try to disperse the crowds in Chile. And finally, tonight, international news. At least nine U.S. citizens, three women and six children were killed in an attack by suspected drug cartel gunmen in northern Mexico. The victims are members of the LeBaron family linked to a breakaway Mormon community that settled in Mexico several decades ago. The victims were traveling in a convoy of vehicles. The security minister said the group could have been targeted accidentally as a result of mistaken identity. The Sonora state in northern Mexico is being fought over by two rival gangs. Family members who have spoken to the New York Times newspaper say two of the children killed were less than a year old. In a tweet, the president of the U.S., Donald Trump, described the victims as a group of wonderful family and friends who got caught between two vicious drug cartels who were shooting at each other. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley, reporting.